Hey everybody, this is Mike with the One Stop Co-op Shop, and I've got another crowdfunding preview for you. This time we're playing Halls of Hegra, which is a solo-only war game. I'm going to do my usual thing, give a quick overview of play, play through a full solo game, and then give my impressions at the end. And just a reminder that we never accept payment for our coverage, we just want to help you make an informed decision. And if you like the content on the One Stop Co-op Shop, consider supporting us through Patreon. We have early access to videos and exclusive videos, like I just uh, did a list of my least favorite games of 2022 so far. We also have a separate streaming channel with even more content, a weekly podcast with interviews and extra reviews, and a Discord if you want to come and talk to us. So Halls of Hager, like I said, is a solo-only war game. It's based on an event that I don't know too much about in World War II when I think it was Swedish soldiers were trying to hold off against the Germans. And pretty much everything in the game is controlled on this board. And for a super quick take on what the game is like, it kind of reminds me of a mix of Robinson Crusoe and one of David Thompson's Valiant Defender games, with maybe a bit of State of Siege games like Dawn of Zed's thrown in. You have to survive 11 days to win the game. At the beginning of each day, you're going to draw an event card from a different deck based on which, like, phase of the battle you're in. It gets more desperate, and this will have negative things happen. Then you try to recruit more people from the local population from a recruitment bag. It's kind of a push-your-luck mechanic. If you uh, try to get too many people, you might draw one of these doubt tokens and cut your recruitment short. And then you take whatever soldiers you have, and you assign them to different action spaces to perform actions. Things like digging yourself out of the snow and finding more resources, uh, getting more supply to help your people rest and recover, uh, healing people, attacking the Germans, that kind of stuff. And then you see how your overall morale is faring, potentially resolve some morale cards. You check if your side has surrendered, and then you move the day token forward one day. And again, if you can survive for 11 days, including at the end of the 11th day, surviving through a last stand card, then you win. But as you can imagine, winning is pretty tough in this one. This is definitely a desperate defense. So those are the basics. I'll get into more details as I play, but let's jump right into turn one, the uh, first turn of the mobilization phase. So again, each turn is going to start with the flip of a card. First, it's going to tell you what the weather is for this turn. In this case, it's snowing. That will move this little weather token to the indicated type of weather, which will mainly limit the movement of people making supply runs on this little map you can see to the right here. But also whenever it snows, the snow marker, which is right here, increases by one space to the right. You got a little reminder of that here. Next, you'll have a text effect. This one says you must move the fear and doubt markers one level up. Some of the volunteers want to go home. So a major thing you're fighting against, especially in the beginning of the game when you're trying to recruit people, is them being afraid of the uh, Nazi army coming. So the doubt track, as it goes up, is going to force you to add more doubt tokens to your recruitment bag, again, which could uh, cut your recruitment short, get you fewer people to help you. And the fear marker, which just went up to the four value uh, at the end of the mobilization phase when this little like side board goes away. This is a separate board that's covering up part of the main board. That's how many people I'm going to lose from the recruitment bag permanently. So I'd like theoretically for both of those to be lower if I can do that. Two other things on the event card. On the right here, you have uh, all the different types of units that you can recruit in the game. This is not used right now, but if any effect during the turn causes me to injure or lose any of my units, then this will kind of give the priority of who gets hurt. But down here is very important. This is what we're about to do. We're going to add doubt tokens to the recruitment bag, and then we're going to draw and try to recruit for the turn. So this is the recruitment bag. It's seeded with a ton of units, basically almost everyone you can recruit in the game. They'll have actual icons in the final version, I assume. And then we have one one doubt token in the bag right now, that's orange. But this little icon here means to add some more doubt based on the current position of the doubt marker, which has a one next to it. So right now we're just gonna add one doubt token. You always add at least one. But if we let doubt climb any higher, we could add two or three tokens each turn. And then you have the recruitment draw. You can get up to four soldiers here, but the second you draw a doubt token, one of the orange ones, you're gonna limit yourself to one soldier and stop recruiting. So basically you're pushing your luck for how close you wanna to get to getting four soldiers. Right now I've got only two doubt tokens and like 20 soldiers in here. So pretty low chances that I'll draw one. And I can again draw up to four, so you just start drawing. And, <laughs> ouch. Okay, so this uh, happens sometimes. If you draw a doubt token as your very first one, you don't get nobody, that would be too harsh. But you just uh, basically draw tokens until you get at least one soldier. There we go, I got a red, which is a soldier. Sorry, I'm using the word soldier, but really the uh, the term the game uses is defenders because it's different types of people. So if I hadn't drawn that doubt token, I could have gotten up to three more defenders, but the second I draw the doubt token, I limit myself to just one of them. So this goes back in the bag. Uh, the doubt is still there, creeping up in the population's mind. And I only get one new recruit for this turn which goes in the ready area here with people I already have, which is four soldiers. They're uh, the best at actually fighting off the Germans. Two volunteers. They aren't too good at much of anything, and they can't do a lot of actions. 
And then one officer who uh, is better at some of like the morale and kind of command and control actions on the board. But that's it for kind of the start of the turn. Now we go into us actually doing stuff where we're going to assign as many of our people as we want to actions. Now I say as many as you want because you might not want to use everybody. Everyone that takes an action is going to generally come into this little tired box. And then we need to spend supplies, of which we only have one at the moment, to get them back to being ready. Uh, plus two people will move into this rest area for free. You skip this step right now because everybody's ready but at the beginning of future turns after the events are all done with you get to decide how much supply you want to use at first each supply is going to get four people uh, you can see this little token here above the little four to go from tired to ready but as the uh, siege progresses you'll need more supplies to get your people active so let's do a quick tour of the actions we can take so sort of like Robinson Crusoe, they are divided in order, and that's the order you resolve them. So number one is defend the walls. Uh, we won't need this at all at first. Putting people here right now would be a waste because there are no uh, Germans to shoot at our walls yet. Then you have fire artillery, which would also be a waste right now because these little lightning boltish or like, a, I guess, cracked tokens here are damage tokens. And our one artillery gun is fully damaged right now. We need to take some actions to uncover its actual attack icons that would let us fire the artillery. So for now, that's a useless action, but in brief, it lets us shoot at a variety of things that the Germans are using to uh, weaken them. Our next action is a supply run. If we put uh, units here, defenders, then they will actually move out based on the current weather. Remember right now it's snowing, so they're slower. They can move one to four spaces. And right now there's not too much to do except to go up here. These are uh, these supply points where we can get those and bring them back to base and they're going to give us supply to get our troops back in fighting shape. But as the game goes on, patrols will get added to the board and also artillery. You wanna get to the artillery and blow it up so it can't shell you. And the patrols will kind of get in your way, potentially uh, stop your defenders. You have this little suspicion track that determines whether you get injured or not when you interact with these things. Uh, you'll see all that as we go. Oh, and sorry, you know what? I did forget that in just the mobilization uh, phase, there is a set of actions over here. You can open a new supply route. And I should explain, because now these are finally actions we can do. The times two here means that we need two defenders to take that action once. And you can do these things as many times as you want. So I could send four people there to open two supply routes. Uh, but if I sent like three there, that extra one would be wasted. Because again, every two times two will actually resolve the action. There's also the negotiate action. You'll see a little black icon here for the uh, officer type of defender with a two above it. That means the officer counts as two defenders here. So this is also a times two action. So the officer would be able to do that all by themselves. Whereas sending something like two volunteers would only resolve the action once also. And this one lets me move one of these tracks down. Again, doubt is going to determine how much doubt I add to the bag every turn, whereas fear is going to take out a bunch of people from the bag automatically. Then you get your widest variety of actions in the maintenance step. Uh, shoveling snow, it's one per defender. Officers can't do it, and then the green hunters do it doubly good although I don't have any of those. So uh, each shovel moves this little token one to the left. And every time you get to kind of a zero spot, you bounce back to three and you get to draw one of these little snow cards, which unlock extra actions for you or give you immediate resource bonuses. There's also the repair actions. Officers can't do that. You need two people and they let you remove these little damage tokens. So that's how I would get my uh, artillery guns back right now. It would also let me free up these defensive position spots here on the left, which I'm going to need when the Germans actually start attacking to put uh, soldiers there to fight them off. The bolster action, again, two people, no officer. I can add a missile. That goes into the hit bag. I'm going to draw this for their artillery strikes most commonly and a lot of bad things can happen from that. Or it lets me increase the defense by one. It starts at zero, and basically once there are German soldiers like at the actual walls attacking us, there's going to be free kind of hit cancellation from the attacks they do, trying to kill my guys. The promote action requires my officer and then one of anybody else except a medic or a soldier, and it promotes that person to a soldier, so they become a little bit of a more useful defender. And then finally, inspire double effectiveness from the officer. Otherwise, it needs two people. I move the morale marker one. We'll get to that at the end of the turn, how that works. And then finally, we have the infirmary. Uh, if my guys get injured, they'll go over here. There are three beds they can fit in. If all three beds are full, then they have to go in the waiting area. And if they're in the beds, they'll slowly heal until they get to the top and come back to being useful again. If they're in the waiting area, they'll slowly go down until they die. And you don't want people to die because having them in the morgue just makes your life that much more tough as morale kind of drops. All right, and here are the actions I chose this time. I'm going to have my two volunteers open a new supply route. That'll get uh, more supplies on the board I can go and get through the supply run action. I'm going to have my officer negotiate, probably bring in fear down. Doubt's still only one, although <laughs> one more increase will hurt us. 
have two of my soldiers repair something. I'm not sure what yet. And two of my other soldiers raise up the defense. I don't need it yet, but I do want it uh, pretty high uh, by the time the Germans are actually attacking. Actually, nah, you know what? Let's have them also repair. We can bolster later. So again, we resolve the actions from basically left to right or from number from lowest to highest. Uh, within a given number, I can do them whatever order I want. So I could like do the negotiate or supply route at whatever order doesn't really matter. I'll go to the officer lower fear for now. And as their action is resolved, they go to the tired spot. These guys will open up a supply route. So I pick one of these three spots to add three tokens to. Each of them has a unique benefit in addition to getting you two supply for getting your soldiers ready again. Uh, this one lets you take away one patrol. This one adds a miss to the artillery bag. This one increases morale by one. And I think I'll do the morale one. That way I've got stuff on both sides. I chose not to send anybody on a supply run yet because it takes one, two, three, four, five moves to actually get to one of these spots. And you have to stop your movement to actually pick up one of the tokens before you come back. So since uh, the snow is limiting movement to one to four spaces, I thought that uh, <laughs> it made more sense to wait a moment before sending people out. Okay, and then I'm repairing twice. Uh, right now, the only two things I can repair are the defensive positions. I don't need those quite yet, but by the uh, end of turn three, when the Germans actually start coming in, I want to repair at least a few of them. For now, I'm gonna repair the gun twice. If I can repair the last spot, I'll get a double attack because the bullseyes are the hits. The middle doesn't really do anything. Uh, each time I do that fire artillery action. And by the way, these damage tokens go into the red hit bag here because when the artillery fires at me later, they could re-damage some of these things I've repaired. And now we get to the end of the first turn. The others will go a lot faster. Uh, the supply run action, by the way, always happens if people are on the board. They get to move, uh, whether or not you actually like put anybody new there. The infirmary always gets resolved if there are injured people, because again, they heal or get worse based on where they are. And then the morale phase, you check these automatic modifiers. If your doubt marker is really good, you get free morale boosts. Uh, if it's a red day, that's on the turn track. Right now it's not. Those are later in the game. You get a minus one morale automatically. If you have no supplies, minus one morale. If you have defenders in the waiting area, which means like they're not in a hospital bed, minus one morale. If you have dead defenders, each of them gives you minus one morale. It's terrible. Don't do that. And then finally, if you have uh, German meeples, these uh, soldiers actually at your walls, like right at the front of your walls, you get minus one morale. All these can bring morale down. There are also actions and effects that can bring morale up. And if you're at zero, you don't do anything. If you're in the green, you get to draw one or more high morale cards and you resolve some of them. Those give you bonuses. If you're in the red, you draw one or more low morale cards. Those give you negatives, as you can imagine. Next, before the turn ends, you check if your surrender marker moves at all. It starts on the five space here. If you get to the skull and crossbones, you lose. So it goes up one if you have three or more defenders in the morgue, up one if there are four or more defenders awaiting and dying. It goes up one if all six German artillery are on the supply map. Uh, that won't uh, happen until later. And then you immediately lose the game in the siege turns, which are the last five turns of the game, if you don't have uh, the number here of defenders like left not in the infirmary. Uh, so <laughs> right now it would be five, but we're not in the siege, so it doesn't matter. Okay, then we check if there's anything on the turn track we have to resolve, and then we move the turn marker. So yes, we have two little, another small, uh, two icons for German patrols. We're going to place those on the map, and then we go into turn two. And each of these uh, has a number on the back, five and a six in this case. Oof. So the six is blocking my access to the uh, one supply thing I just did. The five is not as big of a deal. In mobilization, they go on the green spots. Uh, during the first attack set of turns, they go on the yellow. The first siege, they go on the blue. The final siege uh, turns, they go on the orange. So they get closer and closer and kind of muddle up your movement even more. But that was one whole turn out of 11, and you've seen almost all of the rules. We'll get into some more specifics of, like, attacking and defending as the uh, Germans come in in the first attack phase. But the next two turns for mobilization should be very quick. Okay, first we do this. We're in cloudy weather now, which is much better. Now we can move one to five spaces. We lose one morale, and you must move. Oh, no, the fear and doubt marker's one level up again. So our morale goes to negative one for now. This does, I should have said, bounce back to zero at the end of every morale uh, phase. So, like, even if you're in, like, negative three or positive three, it goes back to zero for the next turn. And then fear and doubt creep up. Oof, that means I have to add two doubt tokens. I should have lowered that instead of fear last turn, I guess. Why would we even try to resist the powerful Wehrmacht? Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> well, we're going to try anyway. So we're going to add doubt tokens, in this case, to Lord help us, and then draw for recruitment again. All right, so here we go. And, okay, we actually got a real token this time. Um, it doesn't hurt us to draw again, because even if I got one of the orange doubts, I would still get the one soldier I've drawn so far. Okay, so I got two volunteers. The nice thing about them is when you recruit them, they also bring supplies with them. 
Should I go for a third person? Uh, I think I will because I didn't get anybody last turn. Okay, good, good, good. So this is uh, one of the hunters. They're better at uh, shoveling out snow and also faster to bring supplies back to the base. So I'm going to recruit all three of these. I could go for one more, but if I drew a doubt token, one of the orange ones, I would only get one of these people, and the other ones would come out of the, uh, the bag entirely. So they wouldn't even go back in the bag for next time. So I'm definitely going to stop there. So they go straight to ready, and again, each blue volunteer I recruit gives the supply with me. They brought some food from home, I guess, so we've got three supply now. And for every supply we spend, we can move four people to ready. So let's definitely spend at least, well, not like that. <laughs> I wish it became five. Let's spend one to get all four of our soldiers back. Or actually, let's do three soldiers and our officer. I could spend another supply, but supply is pretty precious. I'm going to get to move two people to this rest area for free. They will uh, become ready automatically at the beginning of next turn. So I didn't quite get everybody ready, but I've still got a nice little group of seven people here to take actions with this turn. By the way, something I forgot to mention, you also have a choice to use minus one morale, give yourself minus one morale for the turn to uh, get two people from tired to ready. Basically, you're, <laughs> I guess, uh, brutally ordering them to do stuff when they don't really want to. I'm not going to do that yet, though. All right, so what actions have I taken? I'm not sure if these were the best ones. I'm trying to get it all in frame. I've got two guys going on a supply run to get us more supplies. I've got um, some people repairing. I'm going to try to get that last gun ready, I guess. And then I've got my officer negotiating, get doubt back into the one space. So I'm not getting double doubt again next turn. So resolving all of that, doubt goes back down. Um, I could repair. I'll repair those next turn. I'm going to get the artillery ready to hopefully fire uh, next turn. And then I'm going to inspire which will move morale back to not drawing anything. Otherwise, I would have had to draw two low morale cards and resolve one of them, which I didn't want to do, although maybe they wouldn't be too bad. Oh, whoops, I forgot to do supply run. So they can each move five this turn. I think they're going to do the same thing. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, they can't actually end on the same space as each other, except for up here and back down at the fortress. And since they ended on these things, they can grab them. Now, while they're carrying these, their movement is one less, except for the green guys. So if we have another cloudy day next turn with movement 1 to 5, he'll get back to base, but blue won't. If instead we have a sunny day with movement 1 to 6, they'll both get back to base. So that's what we're hoping for. All right, nothing we have to worry about with the infirmary. Morale is at zero. and We don't have any uh, negative modifiers there. Nothing for surrender either. And nothing on the forced turn things. So we move forward. At the end of this turn, we're going to add uh, two patrols and resolve the coup, which is when we're going to lose defenders from the recruitment bag based on our fear level. Uh, this board is going to go away. Germans are going to start coming in to attack us. Yikes. So here's our last mobilization event. It is a sunny day. Yay, we can move quickly. Oh, but oh no, we have to injure two defenders. So um, this is where we use the little priority thing. These are going to come from the tired defenders. So first we do hunters, we don't have any there. Then we do soldiers. So two of our soldiers are going to get injured. One of our trucks drove off the road and crashed. And whenever someone is injured, you roll a d6 to determine how long their recovery will take. You're hoping for higher here. So like a five or a six. Ooh, that was good. A four and a six. So they come from the tired area. And each column is a bed. You only have three of them. So you really want people to be in the waiting room. So we'll do the four and the five or six here. At the end of the infirmary phase, they're going to go up one. So this guy will be back to the tired spot. Uh, people could also come over here and take the treat action to move one of them up one space if they're in a bed. And now I have to add a doubt token. Uh, we're at one again. So I only had one which means we've got uh, five of them in there, and I'd say maybe double that many defenders. So I'm probably going to stop if I get two defenders and not push my luck any further. So let's see. Okay, we got a soldier. Nice. And for a second draw. Okay. So um, we don't get hurt at all. The doubt does go back in the bag, and we still get the one defender. If we had, like, uh, two or more people there, one of them would have been taken out of the bag entirely, and only one of them would have actually gone to the ready area. So we didn't exactly get hurt there, but it also didn't help us. Uh, my rest people come out. And now I will spend one of my remaining two supply. I'm about to get a bunch more from my defenders returning. And that'll get all four of the remaining people there. So I've got three soldiers, three volunteers, one officer, plus our friends over here and our injured people. All right, so here are the actions I'm taking. I'm having my officer negotiate again. I'm going to fire artillery once. That uh, is only soldiers and officers who can do that. You can see uh, blue, green, and white. You haven't seen any white yet, but they're medics. Uh, they aren't allowed to take that action. And I've got everybody else repairing to free up more of these defensive positions. Is that the best call? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I haven't shoveled any snow this game, which means I haven't unlocked any of the super powerful bonus actions. So, you know, who knows if I'm doing the right thing or not. We'll just see what happens. So first negotiating, I'm going to lower fear to three. Again, that's uh, about to happen. We will lose some automatic people from our uh, recruitment bag. So I want that to be a little bit less. 
Then I'm going to fire artillery. I can pick the infantry sector, which isn't open yet. That's where they'll be attacking in a second. A map row, which would mean one of these colored rows. So for example, I could blast up both those patrols away. Or the airfield, where I get to do one option per one of these revealed. Here's the airfield. I can remove one air stack. These guys will be getting added to the artillery like hit bag as uh, the siege progresses. So I don't need to worry about that quite yet, but it could be good to get rid of them. I can also add two miss tokens to the hit bag to make it less likely to hurt me. I can increase morale by two. That would let me draw some of those good morale cards. Or I can move the surrender marker down one. And I'm going to pick that option. I'm going to add two miss tokens to the bag. And I'm going to increase morale by two, which will get me a few free high morale cards in a second. Yay. But each time you attack, you roll to see if your guns get jammed, and it's based on how far away you shot. Uh, in the case of the airfield, it's the furthest away, so I get to roll a die, and only if I get a six do I not to jam myself up. Unlikely, but there's a chance. Nope. So what we do is we flip the rightmost one of these tokens to its jam side, and uh, we need to take a repair action to get that ready again. Oh, well. Next, we do our supply run. Remember, even though uh, nobody actually is going out new this turn, we still get to move everybody who's already there. It's sunny, so we move six, but anybody carrying a supply who is not a green hunter only moves five. So my blue volunteer, one, two, three, four, five. They still get back to base. Each time you get back to base, you can uh, see it summarized here. The defender moves to the tired area. You get plus one morale. Oh, I forgot I was already getting morale. And you get plus one suspicion. And you get two supplies plus whatever the bonus is, in this case, another supply. So suspicion goes up to two. Morale goes up to, th you know what? <laughs> With that in mind, since I'm going to get two morale this turn from the uh, supplies, I'm actually going to pick, in addition to my two misses, instead to remove one air style. I'll take away one of the ones that injures my defenders. I find those worse. Then we get three supply from that first guy. That was two for the supply run itself, plus one for the bonus. And my hunter also makes it back. So suspicion goes to three. Morale goes up to two. He is also exhausted for running. But we get three more supply, taking us to seven. That's fives and ones. All right, so pretty well supplied. We have two repairs. I'm going to go ahead and open up two of the defensive positions. Now I will have three people that can shoot at the Germans. Four is the max. Although I've not increased my defense against them at all yet. That's not good. And final things, uh, each of the guys in bed recovers automatically, so he is back to the tired area. He's one space away. And morale is two, so it says draw three high morale cards and resolve two of them, then this bounces back. Let's see our options. It's always based on the phase you're in. Right now we're in mobilization. Can move the snow marker two steps to the left, add a miss to the hit bag, or, ooh, repair one damage tile? Let's do the repair. That's a free, awesome action, and... Snow marker is the equivalent of two people. I just added a bunch of misses. Yeah, so let's do the snow one and the high morale. These get discarded. This one gets shuffled back in for possible drawing later. So I could repair the jammed gun, but I want the fourth defensive position. You'll see why that's good in a second. And then I'm also moving the snow marker twice. Hey, maybe I'll actually dig myself out at some point. <laughs> All right, and then we do the end of the turn. So we're going to add two patrols and then resolve the coup and go to turn four, which is the first of three first attack turns. Hopefully the two patrols are in the middle where I won't care about them. Nope. No such luck. <laughs> One of them is right in front of the other supply I haven't gotten yet. And now we resolve the coup. It says draw X discs from the recruit bag and place them in the reserve. That means like out of the game. X is where the fear marker is. Redraw doubt disc. So I can't take out doubt, unfortunately. So we ended up at a three. So three defenders are too afraid to ever help us. They are out of the game pretty much. Uh, one hunter, one soldier, one volunteer. Okay, then we move the supply marker one step to the right. This is pretty terrible. It means that now each supply will only get three of our people ready instead of four. Ouch. Okay, now we're forced because the Germans are at our walls to place one defender on each defensive position not covered by a damage tile. Uh, they can come from the tired area, though, so we don't have to uh, pay to recover them. And then if the people that we placed, three or four of them are soldiers, the red units, then we get uh, one or two free morale. So sure, although I might want them somewhere else later, I'm going to put all four. I had exactly enough uh, soldiers there. All uh, defending. So I get an immediate two morale boost for next turn. Then this board gets flipped. It's not entirely gone yet. And these fear and doubt tokens are gone for the rest of the game. So now we have the first attack board. German soldiers are going to be coming in to sector one here. Up to five can be there. Once there's too many or once they move, they'll go up to sector two. That's red, so it can affect morale if you have soldiers there at the end of the turn. And then eventually they might get to charging where they automatically damage our defenders. They're going to be shooting at us every turn, or at least some of them will. We'll be shooting at them for free every turn. That's just a free action for anybody who's on the defensive positions here. Except for getting injured, they can just stay there and shoot every turn for free, which is nice. And after three more turns, after turn six, we're going to retreat into the actual fortress and start enduring the siege where uh, this will go away. And it'll be a much bigger uh, attack going on. All right, so going into turn four, now we're drawing from the first attack deck. It's cloudy and I lose to a morale. Well, 
Cloudy's not too bad. We can still move five. And the lose two morale just uh, cancels out what I got from putting my soldiers there, so I'm happy with that. The morale is running low. You have to do something. Okay, we're going to recruit, and then we're going to add four German soldiers and then resolve them. We'll see that in a second. So first of all, let's recruit. Let's see. Uh, looks like we have almost ten defenders and about five doubts. So again, I'm going to go for like two defenders, I think, is maybe not being too greedy. Oh, I got my first medic. They heal better, as you can imagine. And a doubt. Okay, so that's all I get. Oh, well. Okay, then I add four of these German meeples. When they're standing up, they are ready, which means they'll activate this turn. Uh, you can also suppress them, which means they lie down. Not as good for an overhead camera thing, but you get the idea. Now I'm going to roll four dice, one for each of them. Each five to six means they'll shoot at us. Each three to four means they'll move up to the red. On a one or two, they don't do anything. We're hoping for a lot of ones and twos. Oh, nice. Okay, so one is moving and one is shooting. We can move them up into the boxes. So first we would count everyone that was hitting in either box. We would subtract our defense, which is zero. So if we'd even <laughs> repaired one defense, then we wouldn't take this hit right now, but we do. Which means I have to roll for the leftmost defender. Ooh, nice. We do have a bed for him and he got a five or six. So he will be actually back to being tired next turn. That wasn't too bad at all. All right, and then everyone is moving. First you move people here up, and then this guy moves up. So now he's in sector two. If we don't take him out, then uh, we're gonna get minus one morale at the end of the day for having somebody in this red area. And then also he could move up to the charge area and hurt us a bunch. All right, now I get to recover. So what do I have? I have four, five, six. So it seems like I should probably just do one supply. Get the hunter, the officer, and two of the volunteers, and the other two can go to the rest area to come back for free next time. Now, let's see, can I make a supply run? We do move one to five this turn, but there's patrols blocking. Uh, when a defender who's running and doing a supply run moves on a patrol, they can stop and decrease suspicion. They can try to keep moving, but then they raise suspicion up one. Well, first, actually, they roll a D6. If they get higher than the suspicion, so right now it'd be a four, five, six, they get past them, but they raise suspicion up one. Otherwise, suspicion goes down two, but they get injured, which that doesn't sound great. Now, soldiers, the uh, red units, can go onto these guys and actually blow them up, like get them off the board. Same thing with the artillery once it gets placed. But then they do the same roll to see if they get hurt or just raise up suspicion. But either way, I don't think I'm doing that this turn without any soldiers available. I could move somebody else here to help defend, but I think the three soldiers have a decent chance, at least. So I'm going to add my one hunter shovel snow. They do it twice as well, which will actually get me a snow uh, card for the first time. I think I'll have my officer inspire people, or I could promote one of my uh, volunteers to be able to fight better. Uh, nah, I guess it's okay. And then uh, I want to repair the gun, but I really want to uh, bolster up things and get some defense from the Germans attacking us. I do have my medic left, but you can't really do much. I guess they could shovel snow again, but I don't want them to. So they'll just stay ready. I mean, I don't have to use much supply next time. Now, I do get to fire with my defend the walls people for free. I believe that you can't choose to move them away. I think they have to get injured on the walls or something else needs to happen before you can, like, pull them off. I might be wrong about that, but I think that's right. Actually, I am wrong. You can put somebody in the same position, and then you move the person that was there to the tired area. You're not going to do that. So you roll a d6 for each defender of the same type. Uh, the reason that matters is they all suppress on a 1 to 3, like taking away the Germans' next action, or hit them off the board entirely on a 4 to 6. But their type determines how far they can shoot. My red guys, uh, they're orange with like three bullets here. They're changing the colors and icons and such. Uh, they and the officer can shoot anybody, whereas the hunters and volunteers can only shoot people in the red. They have less range. So yeah, I'm rolling three, hoping for fours through sixes. Nice, got two kills and one suppress. I uh, want to get rid of this guy so we don't get the automatic morale down. One of them and suppress him. So he uh, will skip rolling next turn. And again, they stay there. They don't become tired or anything. Okay, then my green guy's going to shovel snow. Hunters are twice as good at it, so it goes one, two. So this resets to three and we get the top snow card which is a new action that actually goes on the board. And these actions have their own damage tokens, so at first they only do one thing, eventually they can do two. So here for two people, I can just remove any patrol on the board, that's pretty nice. And then if I repair this action, when I do it, I can additionally reduce suspicion by two. Medics can't do it, soldiers do it twice as well. I don't know if I'll have time for that, but hey, at least it's something. Okay, then my two volunteers are bolstering my defense. Definitely going to get me a free, not injured result every turn. That's much better than having my guys get shot. And finally, my officer is going to move morale up one. Because that goes all the way from nothing happening to drawing two cards and resolving one. And they tend to be good. And then maybe the best thing, both of my injured soldiers are back in the tired area. All right, we do morale. It's still not a red day. We're not out of supplies. No defenders are dead. Uh, we don't have any soldiers left in the red area, so we just stay here. 
We draw two cards, resolve one. Move two defenders from the tired area to the ready area. That's pretty nice. Or remove a patrol from the map. We're going to do that. Because I would like to make at least another supply run at some point, and this guy is totally blocking up that one I don't enjoy. All right, no reason to surrender yet. We're going to turn five. At the end of this turn, we'll get three more patrols. And let's see our event. It's cloudy. Okay, so we can move five. That's good. Oh, we're adding two patrols. The Germans are spreading out in the landscape surrounding the fortress, closing in our position. All right, I think as long as we don't get a six, we're okay. A two. Now we're in the orange row. And a four. All right. So we can get to the supplies we wanted to get to. Hooray. All right, we're going to try to recruit again. I'm going for two... <laughs> or get a doubt right away. Uh, build up too much doubt. So we're just going to take the first guy we get, another hunter. All right, these two volunteers are coming over. Ooh, I think last turn I cheated and moved three people over, or sorry, four people over with uh, one supply instead of three. We won't do that this time. How many do we have? We have six people, so hmm. I definitely want to spend one supply and get three of them over. Then it seems kind of a waste to do another supply, so let's just... Move two to the rest area and have one guy doing nothing. Although I would kind of like the hunter to go out and get that supply. Hmm. You know what, here, why don't I go down one of the morale track to get two more moves? Because I want to save my supply for later. So I'll get two more people over and then only one guy in the rest area waiting. All right, so I have almost everybody ready. Oh, wait, wait, I'm sorry. I shouldn't be doing any of this because I did not resolve the attack yet. There were four guys coming. So one... Two, three, as soon as the space is filled up with five guys. Four, they automatically just jump forward. So we'll roll four dice for these guys down here because one is suppressed. Ooh, okay, so they got one move and one attack again. That's not too bad. So one hit, one move. And then one for this guy, hopefully not a hit because now I can block one hit for free. I think, oh no, is that a move? All right, so um, the hit does nothing because our one defense cancels it. This guy moves up to red. He charges, which injures the leftmost person on a defensive position, but then he goes away. That's the silver lining. And let's hope for another... No, not a good result. He's going to take a while to come back. Or I could uh, throw my doctor over there. That would move him up too. I might do that. Okay, and then everything else I talked about happens. <laughs> All right, so let's see. What else am I going to do? Uh, for actions, I think I'm going to go ahead and shoot the max awesomeness. Well... Let's make one of them a blue, and he'll kind of take fire for the red guys, because he can shoot this guy just as well. I'm going to have both of my fast guys run, since the uh, the hearts on the right are opened up. I'm going to unjam my artillery, hoping to fire it next turn. Um, I guess move my morale up so I don't have to suffer the negative morale card. And sure, let's get my uh, soldier healing a little bit faster. I got one red guy left. I guess I could treat him all the way to there, and then he'd be back next turn. Sure, let's do that. All right, so we're shooting. I'll do my blue guy first because he can only hit this guy. So, darn it. He suppressed him. <sighs> now I have a question. Do I just have my red guys finish him off if they get a hit? Because he's still going to generate minus uh, morale for being there at the end of the turn. Ooh, my red guy's only got two suppressions and a hit as well. Oh, sorry. This guy's stood back up. Um, um, yeah, I guess I'll do that. I don't want to get the morale hit. Even if uh, other things are going to happen bad anyway. So my blue guy was kind of a waste. But at least he'll tank for the soldiers in a second. All right, supply run. Five movement. One, two, three, four. Whoa, whoa, whoa. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, my gosh. Stupid me. I didn't realize that these supplies are further away. Oh, man. Um, Maybe I don't need supplies yet? You know what? Forget that. We'll, uh, we'll bolster. <laughs> we'll get two free defense every turn instead of one. Oh, that was a bummer. Okay, uh, then we repair, so we'll uh, unjam the gun, ready to do a full two shot again. We'll move morale back up to zero, so we're not drawing any cards. We'll move this guy up three, double from the medic, and then he will heal himself. Oh man, that turn was uh, something. Uh, yep, none of these apply, so we're just at zero, not drawing any cards. None of those apply. So we're adding three patrols, then going to retreat, where they're going to block off that uh, heart again. Actually, you know, uh, another guy on two. Five, but I can still go that way. And four. But just for future reference, anybody else playing the game? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, so every single one of these is reachable in five moves except that one. That's why I confused myself. Ah, darn it. Should have known because morale is a better bonus than the other things, so it makes sense that that would be the hardest one. All right, now we do our final first attack card before we get into the siege. It's sunny. Hey, we can run faster. Uh, remove one delivery token from each of the leftmost two open supply depots. Some of our surrounding supply depots were discovered. Okay, so one there and one there. Now there's just two there. I think I might still send my guys to get that. In case I didn't make it clear, you cannot 
do a supply run when there are no supply tokens. All right, now we're recruiting. Hey, I actually got a soldier. Come on, give me two. Give me two. Give me two people. Nope. <laughs> the doubt says no. Just got a new soldier, but I'm happy about that. And now let's do it in the right order. We're adding four new Germans. So one, oh gosh, two, three, four. So these three guys, that's only one moving. That was a good roll. And these three guys, I hope at least one of them hits instead of charging. Because Actually, two of them would be great if they hit because I have defense for that. Charging does not get defended by defense. Okay, good. I did get one and one charge. And one nothing. I'm happy with that. All right, so the one hit does nothing because I have uh, at least one defense. The one charge injures the blue guy. That's what he was there for. So nice to do a job. Uh, oh, awesome. He is going to heal really quickly. And then this guy moves up there, and these guys just stand up ready to fight. Oh, there are a lot of them. All right, now we get to this. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Whew. Um, so let's do two supply. That'll get six of them back and leave uh, two hanging out. So I guess, well, you know what? I don't think we need the medic yet, so let's have him be there. So we got three soldiers, two volunteers, two hunters, and the officer. And yeah, I think I'll send a volunteer to help fight and tank damage. I'm gonna send two of the soldiers to shoot the guns. My two hunters to do supply runs at the open spot, get the last supplies I'll get for the entire game. Uh, Officer Inspire, get us some free morale cards. What do I do with these last two guys? Um, could get defense up to three or add another miss token. Or maybe they just hang out. Yeah, <laughs> I like the idea of hanging out and uh, <laughs> just being able to help out next turn, not have to use them as a supply. So yeah, we'll just leave them in the ready area. All right, so first we're defending the walls. We'll have the blue guy shoot here. And ooh, he actually killed one. Nice job. And the three red guys shooting. One dead, one suppressed. Yes, yeah, so we'll do it here. So we are going to get minus one morale. Not much we can do about that. All right, next is firing artillery, and we're going to shoot at the infantry sector with it because we get to hit two infantry. This is one of the sectors per revealed thing. So we'll kill four guys, and we suppress the rest, which means, yes, because all those guys would have moved forward to the siege, and now they won't. Take that. And the nice thing is I have a decent chance of not jamming it because, look, since it's so close to shoot these guys, I only need a three plus. And, yes, okay, so I don't jam my gun. It is still at full capacity for next turn. My commander's inspiring us. That'll cancel out the guys in red. Although, oops, we're going to also have a red day. So, yeah, we are going to take some negative morale this turn. But so it goes. And then, hey, he's coming back. Oops, I forgot the supply run. It's sunny. They can move six this turn. One, two, three, four, five, six. They're each going to pick up one. Remember, they don't get the minus one movement penalty for carrying supplies. So if we get another sunny day and nobody comes here to block them, they can uh, get back. And into morale. So it is a red day. You can see down here on the turn track. Uh, so, our morale goes down one. We also have at least one person in a red sector. So that goes down one, because my guys can roll better. But nothing else applies. So we're drawing two low morale cards and picking one to resolve. Of course, they're all bad. Lose one supply or add one patrol. Hmm. If I add a patrol, the only one I care about is getting a six. But one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight are out. Which means of the four that remain, two of them are the number six. I don't think I can afford to do that. So I'm going to lose one supply. Brings me down to only two supplies, but I think I should be pretty much guaranteed for my guys to get back with more next turn. Oh, that's right, unless uh, they're too slow. So we'll see what happens. And now we resolve the retreat step. We get rid of our second uh, small board. So what's this say? We're going to place an artillery on each space marked with an artillery symbol on the yellow row of the map. That's three of them. And if I don't go and take these guys out, you're going to see they're just going to blast the heck out of me. Then I move the supply marker to the right and I lower defense by one. So now each supply only gets two of my guys back, and I only get to cancel one hit each turn. <laughs> okay, then this goes away. All these guys come onto the main board, but this guy's still going to be suppressed. And then we place one status tile on the machine gun. So this guy comes into sector one. But we get a new toy to play with, which is the machine gun. Um, it can suppress or hit based on your roll up to three people. Uh, it uses the range of the person firing it, so one of your defenders actually has to like select to fire the machine gun. But then it automatically gets jammed every time. And you need to use a repair action to get it back. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so now they've got four ways to go. They've also got this grenade action that can lower our uh, defense. It lets us get rid of two of these people, but the defender gets injured automatically. But uh, anybody except medics can do that, so that's not too bad. All right, with that, the siege has commenced. It's cloudy. Oh, we can't get back this turn. And we're adding a artillery token to the hit bag. Those are some of the nastiest ones. 
It says, more German artillery has been spotted on the road to Hegra. All right, now we're going to resolve airplanes, artillery, and then five soldiers. You don't get to recruit anymore. We're done recruiting. Oh, no. So first, what does the airplane icon mean? Simple as anything. You just add the two leftmost airplane tokens to the hit bag. In this case, they were taking away our supplies. Then artillery, here's the nasty part. You look at the rightmost revealed space that's not covered by artillery, which is a five. I'm going to draw five hit tokens. Now, if I can get out and kill some of that artillery this turn, then it'll go down uh, to, you know, five or sorry, four or three or even only two tokens a turn. So here's we're adding those missed tokens earlier. Could matter. Okay, so we got a miss. Two artillery. Defensive position C and another miss. The misses come out. This is going to go on the actual damage spot, and these go back in the bag. And what do they mean? Uh, that means two more artillery come out on the, I think it's leftmost spaces of the green row now. So, huh. Yeah, that's not great. And what do you think happens when defensive position C gets blown up? This guy gets injured automatically. Not a great thing. Okay, good. I'm getting super lucky with my damage rolls. So, okay. Okay. Um, I guess I'll spend one supply, because I don't think my guys are going to get back this turn. I want to have at least one to not lose morale to get two people back and the other two will go to the rest area. Actually, you know what, forget it. I'll get another soldier and leave my officer there. Oh, wait, wait, ah, I'm doing it again. I forgot to do the enemies attacking. The card had five, so one's gonna get to sector two. The rest will fit in sector one. Control four for them. Um, so on a five, they move uh, four or five, so nothing else for them. And the one guy up there, a two, nothing. Wow, okay, so. That was the nicest soldier roll ever. All right, then we'll let this stand as it is. All right, here's how I divided people up. I'm going to have one soldier run out and try to kill an artillery. Two more fire my artillery. Uh, two of these guys repair. And I'm leaving the medic in the ready area for now. Okay, so these guys get to attack. Now, the sad thing about the volunteer being here is that he literally doesn't have a ranged anybody. So it's just my two red soldiers shooting. Should I have one use the machine gun? These guys are ready to repair if I do. Although they could also repair my artillery if it gets damaged. But there's a good chance that I'll get covered up by their artillery fire next turn anyway. So yeah, I think I will use the machine gun for one of my two soldiers. So I'm just going to go ahead and roll uh, four dice. Although actually, I think, yeah, I need to roll for the machine gun separately. So I can spend one supply to add two to the roll. I really just want a four, five, or six. Otherwise, it's just suppressing three people. Yes! So yeah, I have to pick one area, I believe. So I'll kill all three of those guys. And my other soldier, just shoot in it normally. Only suppresses somebody. We'll do one of the people who's closer. Okay, next is fire artillery. I'm going to pick this row and get rid of both of those. Just because they're a lot harder to get to. Then I need to roll a five or a six not to jam this. It is jam, but like I said, there's a pretty good chance it might get covered by damage anyway. All right, then supply around. These guys can move five. One, two, three, four, five. So they're not going to get back until next turn. Yay. And then he can move up to five. And I want him to blow up an artillery. Let's see, right now the patrols would spawn out here. All the twos are out. There's one three out, both fours, both fives. So there's one one or one three to block the way to these guys. That guy's not gonna get any worse. There are no more patrols to spawn here. So what the hey, I'll just go ahead and attack this guy. The artillery gets destroyed. Then I have to roll. If I roll a four, five, or six, over suspicion, he'll just stay there and he can attack somebody else next turn. Nope, uh, he is injured, but this goes down by two to one suspicion. Oh, but it, oh my gosh. <laughs> if there's one thing that's going well for me this game, it is my healing. All right, these guys are going to repair. And I guess they'll do the machine gun, because again, I'm guessing that'll get covered up. But if these guys come back from regular healing, in a way that went way better than I thought it would. It's not a red day, not out of supplies. Yeah, none of these applies. We just get no uh, morale. This does not happen either. We are adding two more patrols. Let's hope they're not in the right spot. Or I should say the wrong spot. Uh, six and one. Hey, that was perfect. We didn't get the three that would block our way to uh, that artillery. Although, who knows, maybe five more artillery will come out in a second. <laughs> and yeah, let's see, as we go into turn eight, there's the last of Siege 1. Next, we'll be drawing Siege 2. It's snowing, which means our snow level increases. Oh, but that's not too bad. They'll be able to get back. Add one Despair card to the high morale deck. Can we really do this? Despair cards are negative cards that hide inside of this deck. It's shuffled into it. Now the chances of me actually drawing that card are pretty low. Then we're doing airplanes, artillery, and five soldiers. The airplane tokens are minus one morale. I guess I can deal with that. Because of my somewhat success of attacking the artillery, we're only drawing four tokens. And hey, what did I do? Oh my gosh, two damage tokens for gun one. Supply minus one. And no, not another defensive position. See, so cover these. In a way, that wasn't too bad because the one that actually does damage is still there. Minus one supply means I'm out of supply for the moment, but I'm about to get more back. 
It is going to suck, though, for the turn. And this comes out of the game. And this is maybe the harshest part. Another soldier injured. Less space for me to fight on. And if you ever have nobody on the defensive positions, things get really bad. Another pretty good roll there. So, all right. I have no supplies to move anybody over. <sighs> I can lower my morale, though. And I'm about to get some free morale boost from these guys moving up. So sure, let's go ahead and lower morale twice to move four people over. We'll get all our soldiers, I guess. And then these guys will be resting. So hey, we got everybody back in a way. I'm going to send two soldiers out to take out their remaining artillery. Oh, wait, wait, I'm forgetting to attack with them again. It is right on the card. This is just me being dumb. Yeah, because some of my guys could be injured. So four of them are going here. And one goes right to sector two. So five for the bottom, six and five, and no, only six hits, five and four move up. And over here, two more guys, two and four. So that's just one move. So one hit, we still have one defense, so that doesn't do anything. Okay, so it didn't mess up anything, and we're like that. And then he stands back up. That's a lot of people. That's with that being the case, I think I'll suppress the guys who are charging at me. Um, and then I can... Inspire, maybe? I got two guys left, and I'm about to get an influx of supplies, so maybe I uh, repair the defensive position so I can have more people shooting at him. But speaking of shooting, oh, I did repair the machine gun? I didn't even remember doing that. So, okay, let's have my soldier use it, because the blue guy still can't get anybody in range. And that's just suppression, darn it. So I think I'll suppress all three of these guys. I'm going to use the artillery on them. Yep, here that goes. Um, I've got just one icon, which means I kill two and suppress two. A lot of suppression going on. And then I have to roll a four plus to not get jammed. Yes. Okay, then supply run. Uh, one, two, three. He's gonna kill an artillery. And he has to roll higher than the suspicion of one. And he does, so he just stays there. But then it goes up one in time for this guy to charge up. Kill that artillery, so no artillery on the board. And he's also okay. Awesome, so they can, I don't know what they're gonna do actually. <laughs> I guess they can just come back to base. But these guys get, both get back to base. That raises suspicion up by one each. But we get, oh, I forgot you got a free morale. Was I doing that before? Uh, <laughs> maybe I was. So yeah, we should get four morale boost and four supply. And then we're repairing, um, oh, that's right, the defensive position of the machine gun. I think defensive position, because we need to have spots for the <laughs> people to go on. And then now my inspiration seems a little bit silly. I don't need that much morale. And this guy heals one. All right, and we are not on a red day. All the rest of the days are red. We're not out of supplies. Nobody's in the waiting area. Nobody's in the morgue. Nobody's in a red sector. So, wow, we actually get four cards and resolve three. Ah, <laughs> we got the despair. You must choose this. So one of our three has to be that. I could injure a defender to remove it from the game. Um, yeah, actually, well, wait. Who would be first choice? Oh, yeah, okay. It would be a blue guy. Okay, I'll do that. Let's get rid of it so it never comes up again. And awesome, he's not even that hurt. I'm okay with all of that. But it does still count as one of my three, or, yeah, three. So Siege 1, I can remove two patrols. I do not care. I can add two misses to the hit bag. Yes. I can move two defenders from the tire to the ready area. Yep, we're doing those two. So that's like a free supply, basically, to move two people for free. I like that. So I'm not getting any closer to surrendering. Nothing special. But now we're in drawing Siege 2 cards. We'll do three turns of that, and then we draw a last stand card if I'm still alive. At the end of this turn, we'll add three more uh, patrols. Yay. Let's see our Siege 2 card. They get nastier. Okay, it's snowing, which means the snow level increases. If it goes all the way to the right, we take one hit token and then go back to the five. So we might need to shovel out a little bit. You lose three supply. Oh, my gosh. We're back down to one just when we got it. If you don't have enough, we injure three defenders. The supply short storage took a direct hit. Okay, then airplanes, artillery, only four soldiers. Yay, small favors. So one minus one morale going in. And then, haha, only two tokens for artillery attack. Okay, one's taking away a morale, one's adding another artillery token. Um, leftmost, oh man, it's actually tough for my red guys to get over there. Alrighty, and no, 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 we're not doing that, we're doing soldiers. I remembered for once, four of them. One, two, that's full. Three, four, two here, nothing. Two here, uh, one hit, one move. And finally, Sector 3, Grenade. Oh, no. Oh, okay. If two plus grenades are rolled, we lower the defense by one. So that guy's actually doing nothing. Thanks. The hit does nothing because we still have one defense. Thanks. He moves up. And yeah, okay. Although, I mean, all these five guys back here, it's going to mean that they automatically come in in further sectors. So it's not all great. All right. I, if I spend my last supply, I will get minus one morale every turn. So I'm just... 
Not going to, I guess. I could take a morale hit to get two more people in. Yeah, let's do that. So I'll do minus one morale. Gets me down to minus two. I'll get both of these guys in and have them in the rest area. And let's see. Let's put another soldier in here. I'm an officer. Another soldier. Fire the artillery. Um, I've got free hospital beds. So I'm going to have one of my blue guys <laughs> recklessly defend. And all these last two guys repair, bolster defense back up. Oh, no, uh, shoveling snow. Um, I'll just have the, the green guy shovel snow because he does it twice as good. This guy will hang out. All right, so we're shooting. Blue is still out of range, so it's just red. We don't have the machine gun. We got one hit, one suppress. Now, this blue guy is going to hit them, and I think the artillery is going to hit there. So we'll do that and that. And then, yeah, he'll recklessly defend there and get himself injured. So our good rolls continue. Ooh, nope. Okay, but then they're firing the artillery down here. So two guys gone, three suppressed. And on a four plus, we don't jam. Darn it. All right, I'm not sure if we'll ever get to fire that again. All right, next, the supply run. So I think he's going to sneak by. One, two, three. He wants to sneak, which, oh my gosh. Wait, suspicion really at five? Oh, that's right, from bringing the supplies. Um, eh, all right, well, hold on. Can this guy get there? One, two, three, four. No, he can't get over there. So that's fine. We'll just, oh no, we're going to add three patrols in a second. So maybe we just deal with having one artillery out and these guys both come back and are tired. Okay, then green shovel snow that gets back to three, so we're not about to get hit. And he's back in the tired area. He's almost healed. He is not. Oof, I forgot how bad morale was. Uh, it's a red day, so we go down one. We're not out of supplies. Uh, we don't have defenders in the waiting area. No one's in the morgue. Nobody's in the red sector. Okay, so we're drawing four low morale and doing three of them. <sighs> Move all patients in the infirmary one level down. That's not the worst in the world. Draw two tiles from the hit bag. Draw two tiles from the hit bag. Injure two defenders. I'm gonna uh, do the four tiles from the hit bag and move everybody down one. I mean, I don't know. That was probably stupid. <laughs> Maybe I should just injure some people. Now, let's see. Okay, minus one morale, which I guess will apply for next turn. Minus one supply. There goes our last supply, everybody. And then two misses. We're heading three patrols, and we're almost, we're almost to the end. We're almost to the end. There's only two patrols left. I don't think there's a negative for having extra patrols. And nope, I'm wrong. If you need to add a patrol and you can't, uh, you instead remove a delivery token. If you can't do that, then you take a hit. Is anybody really surprised by that? Oh, add another artillery just before they fire. Yay. Mike's going to die. <laughs> but not yet, darn it. Not yet. Okay, it's snowing. So the snow goes up. Yay, I'm glad I shoveled out. Lose one morale and injure one defender. Priority going to soldiers. All right, where are you going to be, buddy? Oh, you are hurt. It's becoming even colder and frostbite is spreading among the soldiers. Okay, we're adding two airplanes. We're doing artillery, which is shooting four. Six. Oh, my gosh. The airplane's getting added now. Injure us. Yeah, four hit tokens. Oops, we lost another defensive position. We add another artillery. Minus one more morale. We're already at the lowest. And then we have to lose uh, defenders. Lose defenders? Oh, my gosh. If morale goes down further, which it's going to, we just have people die automatically. Yeah, I don't think we want that. Okay, this guy's injured. And there's no bed for him, which means he's going to be slowly dying. Oh, he's kind of high up, though. <sighs> all right. Uh, all right. Nope, well, we're not done yet. Soldiers. Yeah, there's supposed to be a desperate game, if you can't tell. <laughs> uh, three, four, five, six. All right, so this guy, what are they doing? They're doing nothing. These four down here. That's a hit and a bunch of moves. And these two down here. Uh, it's a single move. So the hit doesn't mean anything because we do still have one defense somehow. Um, that could have been way worse. And it is way worse because I literally can't take morale hits to heal these guys without, <laughs> without killing my defenders. So we're just going to, yeah, that's where we are. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Let's get the officer in there to raise morale, maybe. Okay. Uh, we'll send him to treat patients. And he's got these two guys. I think raising morale up is maybe the best thing we can do. Okay, these guys are shooting. Blue still can't hit anybody. Maybe not the best choice to put him there. Oh, I forgot about Reckless Defense. Not this turn. Next turn. Next turn, maybe. <laughs> uh, ooh, okay, we hit uh, with the red. So I guess I'll just get rid of one of the guys that's closest. And then we'll raise a morale up one. Just to try to avert automatic losses of defender. Uh, he's going to actually uh, heal this guy one. And 
Uh, this guy won because I want to free up a bed. And then this guy comes back. He goes there. He goes there. He goes down one, but now he can come over so he's not dying. All right, morale. This is not pretty. It is a red day. Down one. We are out of supplies. Lose one defender automatically. And then I'm assuming... I think we calculated all at once. What I'm not sure about is, like, I just lost a defender. Do I now count as having a defender in the morgue? I'm going to say no. I'm going to say that, that all got calculated at the same time. So I do lose one defender, but that's it for now. Oh, no, it isn't. I still have to draw four low morale cards and resolve three. And my lost defender is a soldier. Dead. It's a four low morale cards, resolve three. Lose one defender. Move the shield level down. Move the surrender marker up one. Move all patients in the waiting area down two. Um, oh, if you choose this card but cannot resolve it because there isn't anybody in the waiting area, draw one tile from the hit bag. Okay, so we'll do that for one of them. And our hit is, oh my god, injuring another soldier. Okay, at least he's not too hurt. Okay, then I don't think we can move the surrender marker up. We'll just lose immediately. I'll lower my shield down to zero and lose another defender. I guess. We don't even have enough uh, supplies for him anyway. Wow. That was great. <laughs> All right, then are we surrendering? My, three or more defenders in the morgue? Nope, we only got two. Four more in the waiting area? Nope, we only got one. Nope, not are the artillery on? Oh, are there fewer than the required number of uh, defenders? No, uh, we need at least five. And I got seven. So we made it to the final turn. Let's see if we survive that. It's the last stand. <sighs> so this is our last regular event card. It's sunny. I don't care. Move all unsuppressed soldiers from sector one up one sector. Oh my gosh. Watch the flanks. Um, yeah, none of them are suppressed. Oh my gosh. I guess it's not actually that bad because when we add six soldiers, it was going to fill all that stuff up anyway. Yeah, you know, whatever. Okay, we're adding two more nasty air things to the hit pile. Drawing four tokens for the artillery we never got rid of. And what is it? Uh, injure one defender. Minus one morale. Add an artillery. Well, that one I don't think I really care about. And gun one damage. Hey, that was that's great. It was already jammed, so I don't care at all. Yeah, the plus one artillery doesn't really matter. So really, it's just injure one defender minus one morale that is hurting me. And the first preference for this card is the officer, but they're not in the tired area. You have to go to there for a soldier. The medic is injured. Seems like maybe a bad thing for your medic to be injured. Hey, although you can only have one in each spot, so he has to go there. So they won't die. I mean, we might we might survive, maybe. I think it's going to kind of come down to this. We need to do a uh, six, guys. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So let's roll for him. A five. He's moving into charge, okay? Five of these guys. Uh, two is grenade. Three, four is move. Oh, and one more. Five here. That's a hit. Uh, oh, gosh. That's a bunch of hits. And then one move, one nothing. And then down here, uh, a hit and three moves. So let's do this one thing at a time. Are there at least two grenades? Yes. Which means this goes down one, which means we draw one tile from the hit bag. Adds another artillery. Don't care. Don't care. Because we didn't get to all six, which means extra ones are basically worthless. Okay, then hits. We've got four people being hit. So just this guy gets injured, and we ignore the rest. Okay, and they are also doing pretty well. All right, and then finally, movement. This guy's charging. I have to see what happens when they charge and nobody's there. They move up to there. He moves up to here. They move up. Okay, uh, only one charged. Uh, for each charge, one guy goes straight to the morgue from the tired area. By the current tiebreaker, that'll be one of my two blue guys. So, crud, I do have three people in the morgue, which means I'm definitely going to get at least one surrender. So I got to figure out something. All right, so that's happening. Um, I can actually afford to take some minus morale. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for one. Oh, wait, no, I can't. No, I can't because phew, I forgot that. Um, wait, who was here? Crud. I think it was like that. I forgot that I'm going to lose one morale for each person in the morgue, so I don't want to let my morale drop any more than I have to. All right, all right. Um, I don't really care about filling the defensive positions. I can't shoot anybody. I think uh, the only thing I can really do is inspire my morale up. And then just try to, like, treat somebody out of the beds. Yeah, okay. So, morale up from my bleeder. Um, he'll move this guy up. Then all three of these guys go down. Uh, these guys all go up. Uh, he goes over there. And then that means I should be able to move one of them over so okay and now let's see what happens with morale i think this is where i die 
Um, all right, so it is a red day. Down one. We are out of supplies. Down one. Uh, there are defenders in the waiting area. Down one. There are guys in the red area. That's one defender. Per defender in the morgue, it's three. So I think I'm losing six people. Well, that's everybody I have left. So <laughs> I definitely do not get to the last thing because I would have had to take two more hits from not being able to place patrols. Um, and I would not have had nearly six people left to uh, defend. But let's see what the card would have been. Uh, I don't know why there's a snow on there. Isn't this just drawn at the end of the game? Draw th three towels from the hit bag. Oh, my God. And then you got to resolve all this again? Oh, my gosh. All right. So, yeah, I was not even close to winning. But that's how the game goes. So what are my thoughts on Halls of Hegra? So let's kind of go through uh, elements in the order that they happen in the turn. Event cards. I think these are pretty good. They tend to have a uh, pretty nice variety in the effects. So they can, like, kind of challenge you in different ways as you play and give you different tactical puzzles each turn. And I think the movement through, like, the different phases and what you're doing is really cool. Kind of like the uh, feeling of the siege changing, like, desperately trying to get supplies and then holding out as long as you can. Now, like a lot of these uh, historically-based war games where they are trying to, like, historically show what happened, uh, this is a criticism I have. Or not a criticism, just a uh, observation about, like, David Thompson's uh, Valiant Defenders games is that the game will always, like, kind of follow a similar track. Like, you always have mobilization, then you always have attack, then you always have siege. That makes sense, but I do appreciate, that's like one reason I like uh, Dawn of the Zeds uh, so much, because that, in its ahistorical zombie attack mode, uh, does let the game kind of spread its wings and do more random stuff. Uh, but still, this is great. I think the movement and, like, the desperation that the events and the changing, like, field of battle do is great. Next, looking at recruiting soldiers and your resource management. I think the use of supplies to get them back and the dwindling supplies. You saw how, like, at the end, I could barely even, like, field anybody. And I had to, like, tick down my own morale and bring myself closer to despair and defeat to win. I think that's incredibly tense. Really excellent mechanic there. It also means that you're usually never uh, overwhelmed with, like, 50 actions to do. <laughs> so if it turns then to go fast because you just don't usually have enough supplies to get that kind of stuff out. I'm more mixed on the uh, bag for the recruitment pools just because there is the possibility that you will draw uh, orange uh, doubt tokens like over and over again you could theoretically it's it's you know probabilistically possible to get a single defender every turn or to get like four or more defenders now having it's way more defenders isn't necessarily going to help you that much because as you saw supply is such a limiting factor but since you need a certain number of defenders to hold out at the end when the siege is being checked i still think uh, the swinginess of this is not my favorite like personally i would prefer if the doubt token that ended your uh, turn like came out maybe i don't know uh just something to like kind of not have you get into a deeper and deeper hole with doubt but uh the tension of the bag pool and when to push your luck is cool when it happens you saw in my game i think there were maybe like two times where I didn't just get a doubt token was forced to stop so it doesn't even like necessarily come up that much in my plays so yeah this is this is a part of the game maybe I'm the most mixed on right now uh, but others I think might like it uh, the movement on the board and like the weather it doesn't necessarily matter that much but when it does it matters hugely like your supply runs uh, trying to take out their artillery I think it's a cool like semi abstracted tactical map movement it's simple it's quick it's not hard to understand but it still gives you more of like a visceral feel of sending your people out to try to confront the Germans as for the action assignment, I like it. It's a little bit like Robinson Crusoe, except not having those dice that I hate that uh, <laughs> make your action uh, sometimes almost entirely wasted. So yeah, I think uh, the assignment of people here is really interesting. I feel like all the actions, or pretty much all the actions, are valuable. I can't say that they're, like, equally valuable and that I use all of them every game, but, like, it is cool to shovel out the snow and get really super powerful bonus actions or free resources. It is uh, cool. Like, I've never done promotion, but maybe I should more because you saw that, like, blue guys aren't very useful when they're fighting. So, like, there are some actions that I use less, but I won't make a judgment call yet about the balance of them. I think they're probably all useful in certain situations. And then, like, the uh, tension of fighting these guys off as they're coming toward you, desperately trying to use your machine gun and your artillery and your shooters and having them just, like, charge in and kill your guys. I think all of that uh, works really great. I think uh, it's very exciting. And again, very abstracted, just like the board, just like the map, but abstracted in a way that focuses on the tension and the excitement and the choices without like a lot of fiddliness. Uh, the infirmary is neat. This again reminds me a lot of Dawn of Zeds. I loved it there too, where like space is filling up and eventually people just have to die because you can't uh, help them. 
the morale choices are super interesting of uh, taking the chance of doing these cards sometimes. And, you know, when you want to fight for high morale and you saw like letting it get too low is just devastating. But yeah, I think this one is uh, pretty cool. Again, I sort of compare it a little bit to Robinson Crusoe and a little bit to the Valiant Defender series. I think it has like some DNA and some similar feel to both of those, like just the desperation as you uh, slowly are winnowed down and trying to survive by the skin of your teeth. If you like either of those or you like kind of desperate survivor solo games, in general. I think this could be a big hit. So uh, yeah, go check out the crowdfunding page. It's either live or going live soon, uh, but there should be a link to the crowdfunding page in the video description. Thanks for watching, everybody. Good gaming, and I'll see you at the next stop.